Hey, hey, all you zombies. This is Ant, and welcome to Ant's Minecraft. Today, I've downloaded a world which is Z... Let's get this name right, shall we? SZ Petty's Easy Guardian Farm Tutorial World. Now, this world shows off a guardian farm he built in his own video, which I'll have include a link in the description. It is a great guardian farm and SZ Petty is a really good Minecraft builder. It works really well at bringing up a lot of prismarine shards, probably too much for these droppers to actually handle when you're up at the AFK point. In fact, that is what this video is actually about. I'll be looking at improving this farm not so much to improve the rates as much as to improve its performance in collecting and storing the prismarine that is collected by the farm. That way, if it is enlarged to occupy more of the Ocean Monument area, it will be actually be able to handle that excess prismarine shard load. Now, there are a few problems that need to be overcome, and I'll be looking at some of those problems as we go along. Now, SZ Petty, in his video, had set up a whole stack of command blocks here, which allows you to delete and recreate the farm in stages and bit by bit. And I'm going to be making good use of that to um, show off various developments without overloading the system with uh, with the full farm. So, I'll see you in a moment where I'm going to be looking at first the collection point up in the sky up there. This is the AFK platform that SZ Petty included in this tutorial farm. As you can see, being up here generates a lot of prismarine a huge amount of prismarine shards as well as the crystals, the fish and an occasional uh, ink sack. Now it goes into a loop here where it goes cross and gets picked up by the various hoppers here with a strength 3 sorter. The strength 3 sorter is a vital part of this because otherwise a normal everyday item sorter will get overloaded and will break but a strength 3 one cannot be overloaded in that way. Now, the items are coming up the elevator and landing in the water stream and going past the sorting system. If the sorting system is overloaded, it'll just go past and come round again, hopefully to be picked up again. So if we have a look here, you see here it's at maximum. That means that it can't actually pick up all the prismarine that has been generated by that farm down below. That's okay we can add extra prismarine sorting systems to actually pull out more prismarine out of the stream and help solve that issue. In fact, as it's a guardian farm, you probably want to do that anyway. You probably want to actually make all four of these banks prismarine shard storage and then add other banks around it. That's not really a problem. It could be sorted out relatively easy. However, what we have here is packed ice and chests directly underneath the packed ice. This means you cannot open them. I can open the one below it, but I can't open the one there. In fact, this hopper here cannot even push stuff into that chest. It just won't work. So this here does not work. If we remove those four, halves of the chest, then of course it will work. It will be able to open and therefore these hoppers can go in. The problem is the packed ice is an opaque block. So really we need to first of all arrange so that all the chests can be filled up properly. And there is a couple of ways to do that. One is, like I did there, remove one of the chests and just reduce the amount. Another is to actually replace these blocks here with normal regular ice which is transparent and therefore the chest will be able to open on them. Another way is to actually not bother with the chest here at all and just use the four and maybe even 
raise this up higher so you get even more chests. There's a few solutions. Before I continue, I'm just going to use the controls down there to actually delete the bulk of the farm. We're getting so much prismarine, fish, crystals and everything else that are just collecting more and more in here that is going to overload my computer. So let's just go down here and actually clear out the farm. So I'm just going to press that. These two removes the whole lot and replaces it with air. You won't actually kill the guardians, but as you see, the whole farm is now gone. And I'm just now going to install just the AFK platform. That's that last item. Here. And here we have just the AFK platform. No more prismarine items clogging things up and slowing up the computer. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a signal strength 3 sorter and you have 41 items, well there's only 5 in there, but it's a little yeah, 41 items in the first slot, some sort of junk item that will never be present in the other slots. It must be a different item, you cannot just have prismarine shards in those because the whole point of it is that if this hits four, uh, 64 maximum, then it will still not generate enough signal strength to actually cause the next item sorter to break. That's why you use signal strength 3 item sorters. The problem is this torch. Because it remains on, this hopper always remains powered and it's supposed to remain powered. The problem is that if all the chests here fill up with prismarine shards or whatever item is being sorted, which in the case of a guardian farm is quite likely, then this, it will back up and fill up this hopper with prismarine shards. So it will actually fill up completely like that with prismarine shards. But because this torch remains on, this hopper remains filled with prismarine shards even when later on the chests are emptied. That is, you've come along, you've cleared them out, you've made your prismarine blocks and bricks and so on, but you'll end up with prismarine stuck in here. Now, even if an extra item ends up in there, it will still empty because the torch will turn off, one item will go out and the next one will come in. So it will continue to work. You'll just end up with items stuck in that hopper. It doesn't really hurt things, but it's an annoyance. What is worse is this torch is also powering this. Now again, when this turns off to let one item through, this hopper will also let one item through, or more likely it's being pulled out by that hopper later on. If this hopper was full, in fact, it's actually empty it like that. Pretend it's actually there. So let's actually go into here, fill it in. And if we look, it remains stuck in there. So this hopper also will remain full. So one item will come out here. It will go, one item will come out here. Then you'll end up with all three of these hoppers always filled with prismarine shards, even though there will be space in the chests down below. A torch near hoppers is a bad idea, and it's something that I see time and time again. Let's have a look at an alternative solution. And this is it. This is another Signal Strength 3 item sorter. The signal comes down through the repeater down here, and there is the torch to actually invert the signal. It powers this block and only that block. That's all that it powers. And then the power is transmitted through this repeater and into the hopper. The hopper is transparent. So that power going into the hopper here is not going to affect anything else. This block does not get powered, nor does this one up here. So none of the hoppers are actually getting power except for the control hopper. So that extra items that are in here slowly get filtered out as needed. The, I have removed this chest here and actually moved all the chests back one more. 
that's fine. It's not going to affect anything. In fact, you'll probably make it a little bit more compact and neater, although it is a little longer out this way. So that is an alternative and one that will not have quite that same problem. The When everything backs up with overflow, the, everything here will fill up with prismarine, but when the overflow is finished, it will actually flow out because this hopper will pull the excess items out of here. In fact, that is normally empty. Even when you have the one normally in there, it just flows out even though that hopper is being powered. Unlike the previous item sorter. Whoa, come on, we don't want to drop down here. Now, another advantage of this system is that you can actually also add a line of hoppers like that there. So that there can be an overflow system. So if there is too much story, too much many items in here, it will actually go and output through those hoppers. It's not powered, so items can still flow out through here when no items can go into that one. So when the power goes off, instead of flowing down, it flows across to there. But in a guardian farm like this, that's not going to be very useful because there'll be just too many items for these hoppers to even contain. So for this particular purpose, an overflow protection is not going to be really useful. You're going to need something else up here to actually handle excess overflow. So the next day, the next aspect of the improvements would be straightforward. It's something that would probably happen even if you're just uh, following the normal instructions. And that is basically to expand this so that you have more storage and in fact probably a bigger ice ring so that you have say four sets of prismarine shards, uh, three sets maybe of the crystals and a few for the fish and uh, ink sacs. So, but there are a few little things that I would like to point out here. First of all, when if this farm was running, I was noticing there was a lot of the items getting chucked out. And that's mostly because of this area here. Sometimes the items just flow out by accident, not really uh, anything wrong with it. It's just something that should be done just to improve the situation. So just to close it up like that and make it a little bit more sound and contain the items. Also, if you're building this in survival, eyes of getting ender eyes can be a little tricky unless the dragon battle has taken place. Now, on the Midworld server which I play on, that has not happened. We have not had our dragon fight as yet, but that makes getting ender eyes a little bit hard. But there is an alternative. Rather than using ender chests, you can use cake. That works just as well. So let us get some shards, throw them in. So if we look, you see here that it goes round. That was one pass and then another. It's actually getting a little bit out of the time. Let's actually pick it up now. I threw in 64. What do we get now? 22. So it is actually picking up and it is actually working. Let's actually throw a little bit less in there. So if we throw in 11, you'll see that it actually picked up immediately. There. That's better. So that's one improvement. So I'll be back. I'll just make the changes, improve the situation as, as I would like to implement it, and get back to you here. And I'm back. I've spent some time working on this, had to make a few decisions. I've expanded the ice stream into a uh, complete circuit with four units between. I could make it six units and make it uh, that much longer without any real problem. It might actually work out better because you'll end up with more space down below as well as more chests. The biggest change is I swapped out the packed ice with regular ice. Now the main reason for doing that is that way I can actually place chests directly below the ice stream without problems. So I can now actually use chests right up to the top there and they'll open no problems, not like before. The main reason people don't use ordinary ice 
for this sort of work is because it will melt if there's a high block light. Now, the high block light is not really going to be an issue on this thing because there is no spawning spaces. Everything up here is a transparent block, so there is no actual spawning spaces except on the item sword. These are solid blocks, they have to be solid blocks, and therefore mobs could spawn on them. Now I could just put slabs on top of it like that there, just sort of slab it over and to stop the mobs from spawning, but I've opted to actually put some lights underneath there. This is always powered so the lamps remain on. You cannot use sea lanterns or glowstone here, it has to be a full, solid, uh, a full non transparent block so a normal lamp will do there. That prevents the mobs spawning in this area and there is nowhere else where they can actually spawn so that works very well. Now the AFK platform is still at Y150 just as it was in ZSS Petty's version. The water stream up here I have moved up one block but that was more because I thought I would not be needing to put a chest here but it ended up that I would, could put chests here because I swapped out the packed ice here with nor regular ice. The one change I probably would make to this sort of uh, storage system is I would make this a zigzag of hoppers and chests like this. Oops, not like that, like that and there. That way, if you take stuff out of the bottom chest, the items will filter down and fill the bottom chest first, even though, and keep everything all packed together. The other thing that I would like to do, but haven't really figured out a suitable way, is some sort of shutdown mechanism. The problem is that if all the chests fill up, and with the rate this farm produces, that's actually very likely, this water stream here will likely end up getting full of items. Now I could actually maybe put in a, uh, let's see, we could put in a, um, put in, well let's just say we put in a chest, we put in a block, we take that one out and we put in a cactus there. Let's see, where is a cactus? There we go. So put in a cactus there. That way if the items come up and they fail to actually uh, get picked up by anything they'll jump into the cactus and be deleted. That way you're not actually collecting lots and lots of things. I'm not really keen on it. I would prefer some other mechanism. Maybe put in a piston here or something so that uh, the glass is removed by the piston if the all of the um, well they may made mostly this bank is actually full. For example, we could actually stick. Let's see. We can go like so, and put in. Whoops, that's not very good. It's probably destroyed the. Oh no, probably not with that that speed. Let's see. We'll just continue this. Oh. Whoop. Where is it? There it is. So we can put in a line like that, and when that goes off, when sorry, when this torch goes on, then you can pull out that thing, and the items will then start getting deleted. Now, I would probably move this over a little bit to sort of stop this current situation where you're getting a few that are going in that way. Maybe even remove that block there so that you get more of a, a thing. I don't know. There's a number of things you can do. I haven't really figured it out. But there's a lot of possibilities. Now this is all just storage. There's been a number of things. Etho, Mumbo Jumbo and quite a few other people have actually created storage systems that are for Guardian Farms. This could be made larger, the loop here made larger, lots of things can be done. The main thing is down there and that's where we'll be focusing next. 
So let's go have a bit of a look at it, shall we? And here is S.Z. Petty's design. He used hoppers to collect the drops that are being dropped by the guardians as they bounce around in the webs here. Frankly, I don't see a need to have this dropper arrangement. I can understand having one dropper for the ring of hoppers coming up from there to collect the ink sacs. That's optional. I would probably have it anyway, just so that you can make the dark prismarine. But these hoppers here, when the farm is going full blast, it's not going to be going full blast because I'm here right now. But if it is going full blast, this, these droppers just do not handle the rate at which it comes out. And it would be worse if this farm was expanded further out, either another seven blocks out this way, or even right to the very edge. That's quite possible. There's no reason why you can't do that. But the arrangement here won't handle it. So let's have a look and see how I would actually arrange things here so that it will handle a much higher rate. So this here represents the floor of an ocean monument. This is the lowest floor of the ocean monument. You would have the rest of the monument all the way around us if you have still got it there. This here marks the center. It's actually a four by four area. That's the center. Just pick one of the corners, perhaps the one at the back so that you're further away from the front where there's more water to deal with from the, guard and the guardians and all the rest. So like S said Petty, this here is the position of the lowest level of the Guyton Glass Elevator. That makes it easy to determine if, in if you're in survival. You don't have to actually remove the whole of the temple. You can use this as a working floor. So that makes things a little bit easier. Now, this, that means this here will be the main outside line for the uh, uh, killing chamber. So we just fill in here, like so. And we would have a glass item elevator going up, like so. It doesn't actually have to be glass. You could make this a solid block if you like. Glass just means you can watch the items going up and it looks pretty cool. So let's actually show what would happen if you weren't using hoppers. So this here, that I'm, these blocks that I'm breaking out is where the hoppers would have normally been in SZ Petty's design. Instead, we're gonna put water here. That means we need to set up a water stream. So let us here, First of all, set up the item elevator. That is the fence post that's in the item elevator. We need some solid blocks going around here, like so, to make that central fence post co connect. We need a solid block there to stop the items from coming through. And then you need glass going like that, feeding into the item elevator. So I'm just making an axis tunnel here. So this here is the item elevator. I recommend you put blocks along here because I have found that items coming down here will fall through these gaps. And you end up with the items falling down below. S. Z. Petty didn't seem to have a problem with this. But every time I've looked at his design, I'm finding them down here if you create an item elevator in that way. Now, you also need to actually set up an ice stream. I'm using regular ice and it's in, I'm going to be using regular ice because I also need to have that to be ice. But it cannot be packed ice because if it's packed ice, then this connects. So for example, if this was packed ice, say that's packed ice, it would connect here and the item elevator would not work. So that needs to be a transparent block and therefore best to be regular ice. The other aspect is I need a solid block directly above it 
because I need another fence post there. So what actually happens is we'll be adding water, one in the center and one to the outside so that we have a continuous water stream. There's no dead spot here. And the water stream brings the items round and they come into the next area here at the corner. That gives it enough time to speed up and go into the item elevator. You need to have a block here, one more further away to push them into the center. So let's actually have a look at that. Now, there they come. And as you can see, they're coming up into this, up the uh, item elevator very nicely. No need for any hoppers or anything else. It just works nicely. So that is a different arrangement that you can use to um, create an item elevator without needing hoppers and droppers down here. You can just have that one there, so that's fine. That would actually improve performance because you end up with a fence there, the items can't actually get through. This clearance there, I had, could have a glass here, but you need it pushing against that far edge particularly for items dropping here. So that's best not to be any block there. Let the water flow at a diagonal. So that there is an alternative to a hopper dropper arrangement. The webs would of course be here. That's where the uh, guardians will be dying. And that's how things are arranged. Now, in the design, you have a set of hoppers up there for ink sacks. This is optional. And what I would do is I would have the hoppers coming up. Come on, here we go. Going into a dropper here. So, and then we'll just set up a dropper This is a fairly standard design. It's one that Mumbo Jumbo seems to like particularly well. So we have a, like so, we have another one there. We have blocks separating like that. So that there is a, um, a quick dropper, high speed dropper. That's just for the ink sacks. It is totally optional. So that's the arrangement you would have it. And the rest will be just filled up with glass and whatever to make it all look pretty. So let's actually have a look at the completed unit. And there's the completed unit. The guardians will be going through the lava in the next stage, dropping into the webs, burning up. Their items will flow through the webs, come down, into the water stream here and into the center of the farm. So let us have a look at the rest of the unit. I've set up here alongside SZ Petty's farm. This button here will create his version of the farm while this button here will create my version of the farm. So let us actually have a look at the whole thing. As you can see, the guardians are dropping down, burning in the webs. Their items are being dropped down. They do stay in the webs for a little bit longer, but not too much. In fact, as you, they get lower, they start moving in the water stream and they'll drop down and into the central column. So let's go have a look at a bit higher up. So. If we look in here, we'll start seeing items flying up here and heading up to the storage system we worked on before. On the AFK platform here, the Guardians will start spawning in at a phenomenal rate and the rates here will pick up and start collecting in the various chests to 
produced a full farm. So that is my changes to SZ Petty's Guardian Farm. I'm Ant, this is Ant's Minecraft, and I'll see you around. <laughs>